Hello friends, and welcome back to more Reddit stories. Hope you're all doing awesome today. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and let's get into it. Entitled Coworker Many years ago, I used to work nights and shared a cubicle workspace with someone who worked days. We'll call her Karen. Karen apparently thought the entire cubicle belonged to her, and nobody was allowed to sit there. Everything was labeled with her name, and she would lock the desk. I had to get a separate file cabinet just so I could store my files and stuff, as she was not willing to share. She had little knickknacks, figures, all over the desk and inconvenient areas that made it difficult to work, so I would simply move them to the monitor stand out of the way. I'm sure, and she's tall. I'd adjust the seat, monitor, and phone to be comfortable. Hated feeling like a little kid with my feet dangling. Fast forward a few weeks of doing the routine of moving the figures and adjusting the workspace for my use. I come in and there's an 11 by 14 piece of paper taped to the monitor with an aggressive note. Night person, do not move my stuff, it's not yours to touch, and stop adjusting the seat and monitor because it's not ergonomically correct, blah blah blah. I showed my manager the letter and how the desk was when I came in, then again after adjusting it to my needs. He laughed and said she's crazy, continue to adjust it to better suit your needs and she can do the same when she comes in. I started moving everything into random configurations daily for a couple of weeks. Monitor in front of desk and everything behind it stacked up like a pyramid. Unplugged phone from base and put the mouse in its place. Left seat upside down, etc. I recruited coworkers to get in on the fun, helping to redesign each new layout. It reminded me of what Jim used to do to Dwight in the office. We didn't go as far as putting her stapler in jello. My friend worked days two cubicles over conveniently next to the manager's office, and said Karen would stomp past her every day to complain to the manager about the night person, who was destroying her stuff and making it difficult to work. She conveniently left out the fact she had left a note starting this whole petty revenge. After about a week of her complaining, the manager asked if anything was missing or broken, and she said, well, no, but... Tired of her BS, they cut her off and said to simply readjust to her needs and only come to them if anything was vandalized. It was fun to hear from my friend how hot and bothered she was not knowing what she would find each morning. I never saw another note from her, but about a year later she was voluntold to move to nights. She was telling a few of us about the situation, of course playing the victim, and asked if we had any idea who it could have been. The cubicle was empty because I had been promoted and no longer sat at her desk by this time. Guess she expected the person, me, to get thrown under the bus because the day crew was cutthroat. Little did she know the night crew was ride or die. We all played dumb and started laughing the second she walked outside. No, the cubicle does not belong to you. Others are allowed to use it and adjust items accordingly, you entitled Karen. Make my staff cry? Many years ago, and for many years, I was a bank manager, so apologies in advance for any banking lingo I use, but it's all relevant. This was around the time that Visa and MasterCard debit cards, which only use your money and savings, became a regular thing, but some older customers couldn't wrap their head around it. We had a regular customer who was always rude and complained about anything he could, whether it be the way someone didn't hold the door for him, or the bank stealing his money again. An actual common complaint, as people perceived bank fees and transaction fees as us stealing. For the purpose of the story, we'll call him OCC, Old Cranky c I can honestly say he was the worst person to come into any of my branches, ever. One day OCC comes into the branch and starts verbally abusing my counter staff. This is the third time he has come in believing that somebody is stealing money from his account linked to his debit card. I check the transaction history and agree that the reference numbers are a bit odd, usually just 8 to 12 digits long without much of a description. These amounts are ranging from $20 to $100 and occur pretty regularly, definitely enough to warrant an investigation. The issue is that we have replaced the same card two times now. The cards have different numbers on each of them, so it couldn't be a case of someone stealing his card details as we close and block the previous cards each time we order a new one. The cards cost about $10 for a replacement, so OCC is of course yelling about all the money we are stealing off him. We are charging more fees for the new card. Definitely my fault. No problems, OCC. But this time I am going to get our investigations team to look into the matter. Because, well, I also want to know now. OCC doesn't care about the investigation, just wants his new card. Again, no problem. 
Keep in mind that each time this customer came in, he was obnoxious, rude, and impossible to deal with. So much so that he would regularly cause different team members to cry. Being a small bank, upper management obviously needed to try to keep every customer that they could, and this guy happened to hold a bit of money with us. So a bank being a bank, they refused to close his account and move him on. About a week later, I get the results back from our investigations team. They make me ecstatic. Numerous times I read over the report, and it quickly became my favorite reading material. I will come back to this soon. Again, cut to a short time later and we can see OCC with his wife, storming towards the branch. Even 60 meters away and you could see he was angry, and ready to blast anyone in his way. Well hello guys, I'm anyone. He walks straight into my office. He and his wife sit in my chairs and he throws, actually throws his home printed transaction history into my face, while unleashing his full force of hate against me. I was called every name under the sun to the point where he was bright red, choking on his words as the abuse couldn't come out quick enough. The funny thing is, I expected this. I knew it was coming. I had aligned my chakras for this moment, I think. I have never been more prepared for this moment in my life. I feel the single bead of sweat run down from my forehead. I'm ready. You need to explain to me right now what the f all this is or I'm going to the police, said OCC. Yes, of course. I actually had our investigations team look into the issue with these transactions, but I honestly believe it might be better if we speak in private, just you and I? Absolutely not. You just want to lie. All this bank does is lie and steal my money. Please, OCC, I really want to talk to you in private about this. If not now, did you want to come at a later time? I said. Meaning, without your wife. You better start explaining right now or I am calling your head office, said OCC. Cool, let's get going, I said. I pull out my beautiful manila folder. At this point, I'm shaking from excitement. Here is a list of the sources of the transactions. Should I begin? You should have looked into this when it first started, you coward. Okay, pornhubpremium.com, russianslaves.com, pornsonhuts.com, russianbridewebcams.com. Watching his face drop with fear was probably my biggest achievement in life. OCC, with a complete backtrack on his attitude, says, Oh, oh yes, that's all good, don't... And his wife cuts in. What? Nothing, nothing, I know what it is. That's okay, no need to continue. But I continue collegegirls.com, my free cams. Oh my god, his wife says. At this stage, he rips the paper out of my hand. I can see his wife watching her husband's innocence fade before her eyes. She is shocked and is already asking more questions, but he has had enough of me for today. All sorted, love. Let's get out of here. My mistake, he says. I have never seen an old man get up and leave that quick in my life. It would have been 10 seconds max and he was already outside, his wife yelling at him and shoving him as he walked away. Defeated. My colleagues and I still reminisce about this event a lot, even years after we have all left the company. This is that story that we talk about when we see each other. It gave us all a special closure on his behavior. He never came back to our branch again while I was there, but I hear he was very lovely to the staff at the next branch a few suburbs over. Chicago Karen decided to almost commit a crime. Yesterday I had an experience that can be described as idiotically dangerous. So I am going home from work after what I would call a pretty smooth day of no yelling or stress. I get on the train and this woman in a green shirt and glasses got mad at me for sitting close to her and lightly bumping her by mistake. I'm in the wrong so I give her space and say sorry. Nothing happens for the ride but I realize I had the urge to pee. I knew there was a Wendy's on the way home. I get off and go to it. The same woman from before was chatting on her phone to her friend, I suppose. She talked about me to her friend on the train. I pay it no mind, but when we got outside, she oddly got defensive and accused me of following her. She stops and tried to follow me, saying she wants to call the cops. She also said I lightly bumped her again, when I didn't this time. The real stupidity from this person, though, was stopping and following me, though acting like I was some creep. She called me one to boot. I couldn't have this person following me. I try telling her where I'm going to get her off my back. She doesn't listen. I decide to fake record her to get her to move. I got her to move and I decided to celebrate with a little bit of singing of Na Na Hey Hey Goodbye. 
Yes, I was doing a little bit of taunting and trolling here, I'll admit that. Now I get to the intersection that is super busy, getting ready to cross as this woman decided to go into her handbag and get some type of mace or pepper spray. I don't know what it is. This is where she became so dumb it's laughable. She announced to me what she is doing. I make a joke of it, but she starts to approach me while screaming, Get back, get back. I legit have to talk her down to prevent her from committing assault and possibly an accident. Even some old white dude saw this and stopped to watch her. I even call out to her to stop and tell her someone is watching her commit a possible crime. Thankfully nothing happens and I can cross the street safely. The funniest part of the story is that I start to turn into the Wendy's after she keeps saying I'm following her. I say you effing idiot I was going to the Wendy's this whole time. You're an effing moron. She goes silent realizing she effed up. I go in and use the bathroom telling the story to some of the staff and security guard as they saw some of it. One of them was coming from break actually even. I was told by them I should have reported her. I wish I did but I wasn't thinking in the moment. I'm just happy to be safe. It's pretty obvious this Karen was looking for trouble. For exactly what reason, who knows, but she was clearly trying to instigate something. Honestly, pretty sketchy. The fact that there were other people around is probably what stopped her from taking this any further. Parents putting their kids on our motorcycle to take pics without consent. My husband and I live in a region with a lot of tourism, and we own a rare motorcycle. It's a very valuable old-timer my husband spent a fortune on to restore. We're living in the countryside, but when we're going on day trips, it happens that we park our bike in more busy places when taking a break for lunch or coffee. I understand the motorbike draws attention and that some people snap pics of it, but we increasingly have to deal with parents who randomly put their kids on it to do so. Last weekend, we stopped a couple who was about to do it and they gave us the usual excuse. We would have asked, but nobody was around. Just like not being around makes our bike public property. Minutes later, after just ordering our food, we caught another couple swinging their kid's bum on the seat of our bike. This time it wasn't just a toddler, but an at least six-year-old boy. We received a lot of feedback also from not entitled parents to call the police or make a big scene, but frankly it has become so frequent we just decided to avoid such places because we grew tired of seeing toddlers kicking the tank or mothers pulling the zippers of their handbags along it by hauling their offspring up and down. A commenter made a good suggestion. I'd buy a tarp like cover and cover the bike when parked in a busy place. It can be something made of some thin material so it doesn't take much space when not in use. People won't bother to remove it just to look at the bike under it. And that would probably solve this issue completely. But it's still ridiculous that it's even an issue in the first place. And that's all for today guys. Be sure to drop a like, I'd really appreciate it. And even more so if you hit that subscribe button as well. So have an awesome day, I'll see you all next time.